the mind never dates. The mind never goes out of date. The mind's actual nature is emptiness. It didn't. It was never created because it's not a thing. It will never cease. And it's characteristic of luminosity, that which pre- reflects all appearances, that never ages or goes out of date or, or changes. So the mind in its primordial essence is unchanging. What covers that, what prevent, what, what leads to the state of suffering and prevents us realizing nirvana are the obscurations, and they're twofold. The disturbing emotions, desire, hatred, and so on, and the more subtle obscuration of not recognizing the nature of reality, but imposing instead a dualistic framework on it. Those two obscurations don't date, they don't age. They were the same as in the time of Buddha as they are now, in, at the time of Abraham and the time of now, at the time of King David and the time of now, in the time of Socrates and the time of now. They're the same in the Kalahari Desert as they are in Santa Monica. The business of Buddhism is to strip away the obscurations that cover the Buddha nature of mind. How are you going to update that? Now, you can do it wearing a loincloth if you live in an Indian society, or you can do it in a three-piece suit if you're living in London. You can you can phone your guru up on a phone or send him a messenger by a message by messenger pigeon. Those things can change. If we have phones, we don't need to rely on pigeons. So yes, there can be some updating of those kind of things. You can have central heating in your meditation room. You don't need to, to, to burn yap dung. So we can change on those things. We can even change on things like um, the uh, whether we give white scarves, as we do in, in, in the kind of t- Tibetan tradition, or whether you give flowers, or whether you give something else which you haven't even invented. All those things can change. They're not important. But the core of the Dharma, it doesn't change. <laughs>